Hello, bom dia, guten Tag, namaste, buongiorno, selamat pagi, bonjour and mahaba. Good day to you, trader. This is Mario from Forex Other Way, the channel for traders run by a trader. In this video, I'd like to share with you some ideas related to the square of 9 and more precisely to its properties, which, in my opinion, are very important when you try to work on timing. I mean, when you try to predict future tops or bottoms of the market based on the square of 9. So let's start the rock and roll. It is relatively easy to find horizontal limits of the price of the given instrument. By horizontal levels or limits, I mean the price limits or in other words, support and resistance levels. We simply draw them these lines. Would it be dynamic or would it be static support and resistance lines? And in this way, you can determine to obviously don't forget to do it on a higher time frame than you trade. So if you trade daily, as I do, I usually draw my support resistance lines or these zones areas. If I try to find them, I draw them on weekly charts. But you probably know how to do that. So I'm not going to waste your time. If you try to define the cycles as vertical limits of the time, it seems to be more difficult because cycles usually are not linear. I mean, they do not appear at regular intervals as a certain number of days. Even if the cycle lasts a mystic number of days, like let's say 108 days, the next cycle definitely will be shorter or longer. It's got nothing to do with Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci sequences whatsoever. The length of any cycle appears in the form of geometric sequences, which can be determined using the famous square of 9. Let me show you what I mean right now by that. Let's go to the square of 9 this way. So if we got a cycle of the length, let's say, of 37 days like here, the next one wouldn't be 37. Not big chance for it. You probably checked it already, haven't you? Basically, it should be 65 days if it's a longer cycle and it's going upwards. And if it's downtrend, it might be 17 days, which is the next cycle length. So these values are not linear. They are geometric, in geometric progression or regression. So when you got a cycle of 204 days, for example, and the market goes slower, the next one should occur, the next top or bottom should occur at 151 days from this point when you start calculating. Let me, let me show you what I have done. As the example of nonlinear progression of cycles, please have a look at the results of my calculation. I based on the square of nine using my own secret math formulas that I developed in the past and which I teach my students during my private online training over the Skype. If you want to know the details of my training, please send me an email to the, to the address you'll find under this video down below. So let me show you the results of these calculations, which are somewhere over here. So that's how it looks like. You got a, I got a starting point somewhere over here. This is, uh, this is uh, 2012. It is on, uh, on July 24, 2012, when, mar when the market made a, an important low, very well defined over here, as you might see. Very well defined low. So that's the good starting point. That was 24, this red candle. And based on this, I calculated all these vertical lines over here with the red rectangles. Uh, the hits are marked. I mean, the, the accuracy of predictions. So some of them, most of them work well. Also, there are some misses over here. This miss one day over here, as you see, this miss two or three days, whatever. Probably it, it was okay. By sounds like the market wasn't sure which way was going to go. Whatever. It was, it is a miss. This one as well. And further. 
Some of them are really precise. Some of them, you can learn to calculate them if you want. And here, and here, and here we got some good hits. Important is what we've got over here. Uh, just this year, we got three, three days calculated based on that, uh, on that starting point on 24th of July, 2012. All the uh, marked in red are, are right predictions and this one on white are wrong, uh, mistaken. So in general, we got 2020 over here. We got 9th of January, 24th of April and 9th of August. So please have a look over here. We got 9th of January, which is local correction started on that date. On 24th of April, just this uptrend started somehow. And on 9th of August, we got marked 10 here because this candle, it is 7th of August, 9th was Sunday, so the next trading day is Monday, 10th of August. What we've got here, we've got at the moment here 27th, 11th, which was on Friday. Today we're on 30th, as you see, this candle 30th of, of November 2020, Monday, so here is the Friday. It looks like we don't know yet. We'll see what's going to happen in two or three days, whether it uh, it was a hit. Probably not. As I see, the market is trying to go higher. We'll see. We still got this resistance over here in the area of 120.37. I'm on Euro USD daily chart on this chart. So the calculations made over here, uh, they are applied to the harmonic rules of the square of nine. And the calculations which are hidden here in the blank areas, they are all made based on harmonics of the square of nine. So without filtering, this gives results of decent 68% positive results because this is only the miss, uh, missing missing dates are only 15 out of 47, which is roughly 68% of accuracy. Without any filtering, when I apply the filters to this, it works even better. Now, what I wanted to share with you is uh, when you got sign like that, for example, you see from the very beginning, the cycle, let's zoom it out a little bit, the cycles, I mean, the distance in days between each cycle is very small. And uh, from 2012, uh, as the time goes by, you can see the distances between the cycles, the end, the potential reversals are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it can be self-explanatory. Let me show you. I've got here great British pound USD, which I try, for example, we got, I did it already in advance to waste your, don't waste your time. We got such a situation. We got an impulse here, let's say first impulse. Let's, let's get this one, which consists of one, two, three, four, five, six candles. Let's say the impulse is six candles. So when you go to the square of nine, here we got six. All right. So the next one should be on the 11th candle from the starting point. So to six, we have to add 13 or we can count it straight away. So we got six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 is over here. Okay. And then calculated further, I think, what is uh, 19 here? So the next one is 40. Let me calculate. Here we go. go. So the next cycle should be 40. Let's call it candles, 40 sessions. Very simple example. Don't use it in your trading. It's just for demonstrative purposes. So we got 19, 20. So 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40. Here we go. So this one, and it shows 
the next cycle continuing and the next one is 69 which is over here after 40 you got 69 so in this way you can go 69 is uh, probably this one so you got 41 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 51 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 60 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 69 and this is the end of the next cycle in this simple example i wanted to show you that these values grow geometrically not it's not linear so it's not six 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 it's just going in a progress which you can find on the square of nine and all of its secrets as i told you at the very beginning you can learn or if you want study wd gun the tunnel to the air and other works and you might find it yourself i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it brought you some value thanks very much for watching take care of yourself i see you next time green peeps and bye bye